technique has evolved over the past several months as a result of utilizing the Elcon Series 20,000 Legacy and the 30-degree Kalman bent tip. Using downslope sculpting, the angle of the Kalman tip helps to quickly reach the posterior pole of the lens for safe, efficient, and multi-directional fracturing. The Series 20,000 Legacy enables me to maximize my parameters for more efficient use of ultrasonics and fluidics and facilitates my multidirectional divide and conquer. My hydrodissection technique begins with a lifting and sweeping motion of hydro-free dissection to ensure the proper plane for fluid injection. It is performed from 5 to 1 o'clock using a modified 26-gauge cannula. Cortical cleaving hydrodissection is performed in the superior position sending the fluid wave posteriorly then anteriorly. The lens is depressed with a bent cannula to cleave the cortex from the capsule. Hydrodelineation can be performed with this bent cannula. Conversely, hydrodelineation can also be performed using a straight cannula. It is attempted on the left and on the right side of the lens, inserting the cannula between the nucleus and the epinucleus. Thorough hydrodissection and hydrodelineation facilitates multidirectional divide and conquer and emulsification of the segments formed by fracturing. These are my current memory settings for the Series 20,000 Legacy. Memory 1 is my lowest setting for small pupils and for maximum control of soft nuclei. My IA setting for all of my memories is surgeon control of aspiration, 0 to 60 cc's per minute. Memory 2 is my standard setting for most nuclei. I use higher aspiration flow rates in foot position 3 than in position 2 for improved followability. Also, there's a higher maximum vacuum setting. Memory 3 has somewhat higher flow rates and a higher vacuum setting for increased followability and holding power, and memory 4 has increased ultrasonic power. Using the 30-degree Kalman bent phaco tip, Multidirectional divide and conquer is begun by debulking the superior part of the lens. The nucleus is stabilized with a spatula for the first initial sculpts. Then the second instrument nudges the nucleus inferiorly towards 6 o'clock. Downslope sculpting in the upper portion of the lens is done to just past the center and reduces the chance of a posterior capsule rupture with the phaco port. When reaching the end of each sculpting pass, there is considerable nuclear material ahead of the tip. Downslope sculpting facilitates getting two instruments deep into the center of the lens in order to fracture through the naturally occurring radial fault lines. In the surgeon's view graphic, the multidirectional divide and conquer technique begins with a trench or trough sculpted slightly to the right of the lens center. Nudging the nucleus inferiorly with a second instrument, downslope sculpting is accomplished, sculpting very deeply to the posterior pole of the lens. A large portion of the upper part of the lens is removed using this downslope technique. The Kalman tip works very well for this side-to-side -side movement, getting a deep groove horizontally. The phaco tip is then used to stabilize the upper portion while a spatula pushes inferiorly against the wall, creating a horizontal fracture. A vertical fracture is then created by pushing to the right of the vertical trough with the phaco tip and to the left with the spatula. Both fractures are accomplished in foot position two with irrigation aspiration or with foot position 3 with irrigation aspiration and low-end ultrasonic power. From here, surgeon preference and lens density will dictate how the remainder of the lens is fractured and emulsified. Pie-shaped sections of the nucleus can be maneuvered to the mid-pupillary area and emulsified. I use the second instrument to rotate and maneuver the lens in order to facilitate fracturing of the superior hemisection. The Kalman tip can be turned on its side to fracture in any direction and in order to occlude the tip if necessary. The superior hemisection can be managed with multidirectional divide and conquer in the same manner as that of the inferior section. For entry through the incision, I turn the Kalman tip on its side. Notice the position of the irrigating sleeve one and a half to two millimeters back from the bevel. This helps ensure that with a scleral tunnel and corneal entry, the irrigation ports will always remain in the eye. I turn the Kalman tip down to begin debulking the superior portion of the lens. The second instrument nudges the nucleus inferiorly for the downslope sculpting maneuver, allowing the Kalman tip to sculpt down the slope of the concave posterior capsule. 
Because of its angle, the tip enhances the emulsification process by its shear cutting forces. Notice that the parameters for the Alcon Series 20,000 Legacy are displayed on the right-hand side of the screen. This case has been slowed down 30% in order to illustrate my multidirectional divide-and-conquer technique. After the superior portion of the lens has been debulked, the two instrument tips are placed deep in the nucleus. The spatula pushes inferiorly into the nuclear wall while the phaco tip pushes superiorly, creating a horizontal fracture. The tips are then positioned in the deep vertical groove a vertical crack is created intersecting with the horizontal fracture. Depending on the density of the lens, the segments created can be removed or left in to stabilize the capsular bag. Now back to regular speed. The phaco tip begins to fracture and emulsify the inferior hemisection created by the horizontal fracture. You will notice that I use higher aspiration flow rates in foot position 3 for improved followability and a higher vacuum for increased holding power. I use the second instrument to rotate and maneuver the lens in order to facilitate fracturing of the superior hemisection. Notice how the second instrument maneuvers and feeds the phaco tip which emulsifies the segments in this mid pupillary area. In this case, I stayed mostly in foot position 3 with 27 cc's per minute due to the density of the epinuclear material. Normally, I use foot position 2, aspiration only, at 20 cc's per minute. In some situations, such as loose zonules, I will use memory 1, which has lower aspiration flow rates for added safety. Notice that as occlusion is broken, the iris and posterior capsule remain stable. After the Kalman tip has been inserted into the anterior chamber, I go to foot position 2 and enter through the paracentesis with a spatula to stabilize the eye as well as the nucleus. The lens is nudged towards 6 o'clock and I begin to debulk the nucleus toward the posterior midline with the Kalman tip. As you will notice, I am using the surgeon control maximum 50% phaco power. The video is slowed down to 30% for the first two fractures. The phaco tip is used to stabilize and press down the upper portion while the second instrument pushes inferiorly against the nuclear wall creating a horizontal fracture. While the spatula is holding back a large portion of the inferior hemisection, the phaco tip engages, fractures and emulsifies pie-shaped segments. I angle the Kalman tip to the left side to embed the tip into the nuclear rim to achieve a third fracture. This is achieved with a 27 cc aspiration flow rate in foot position 3 in low ultrasonic power at 3%. Held by vacuum, the segments remain on the tip after the fracture has been made. They are brought into the safe central area for emulsification. The video now is in real time. With the superior hemisection, I burrow into the top of the nucleus while pushing down with the spatula to create fractured segments. Alternatively, the remaining hemisection can be rotated to the inferior position and fractured just like the first one. The bent tip can be maneuvered in the capsule just like a finger to engage the epinucleus on one side or the other. Used with the spatula, in hand-over-hand -hand maneuvers, the epinucleus is fed to the tip. When the last fragments are coming to the tip, the spatula is held under the tip to protect the posterior capsule. With surgeon control of aspiration in IA, I use low aspiration flow rates for working in the fornices to engage the cortex with low vacuum. Once I engage, I pull the cortex out into the safe area 
and depress the foot pedal to increase the aspiration flow rate. This rapidly increases the vacuum and efficiently draws the material to the port. This is a good example of how one can effectively use independent control of aspiration flow rate and vacuum. For irrigation aspiration, prior to using the Series 20,000 Legacy, I was switching between three memories for low, medium, and high end control. With the Legacy, surgeon control of 0 to 60 cc's per minute of aspiration flow rate allows for infinite control of aspiration and vacuum. If there are small wisps of cortex remaining, I will polish the capsule with the back of the IA tip, the port turned up to engage the cortex and strip it with lower aspiration and vacuum. For 12 o'clock cortex, I use a bent 30 gauge cannula. I hold the tip of the syringe with the thumb and index finger and push against the syringe with the middle finger to create a bit of vacuum when engaging the material and then more vacuum once it is outside the capsule. After removal of these cortical wisps, I insert the IOL, here an Alcon Slim Plant LX10BD. Soft lenses and very dense burnescent lenses require variations from the technique just described. The Alcon Series 20,000 Legacy, and particularly the Kalman Bent Tip, are effective instruments for the application of my multidirectional divide-and-conquer nucleofractus technique. <laughs>